Hey, worship leader, I'm new to my church, so I'm trying these four tactics to build stronger connections and relationships with my team. Before I share the tactics, I should just say that your worship team should feel like a family, okay? It's not just a place where people come to serve. It is a place where they should feel they belong. That's a huge difference. There are a lot of worship leaders that I know that just treat their volunteers like paid employees, like see you when you clock in for your next shift. No, it's not that. It's a family. It's the family of God, and your people should feel seen, known, and loved. Every human being in order to flourish needs to feel seen, known, and loved. Are you doing that for your volunteers or are you just using them? Are they just fulfilling a function? It should be a family, not people fulfilling a function. Okay, so I know that's a very strong way to start this video. Hello, my name is Alex. Hopefully we uh, become friends, but I just want you to know that your team should feel like a family. Your people should feel valued and appreciated and you shouldn't reach out to them only when you need them to serve. I've been a part of ministries where the only time I hear from my worship leader is when he needs me to serve. And that is not very inspiring and it's not a healthy environment to long-term desire to be in. You want your people to want to be at church and people want to be where they feel seen, known, and loved. So try to build more connection relationally with your people using these four tactics. Number one, testimony sharing. This is something we're doing at my church. I'm brand new to my church. All of the musicians that we're using are paid musicians and I found out they don't even know each other outside of when they come to this church to serve. So I don't know them and they don't know each other. So I'm like, all right, what are we gonna do? testimony time. I know that sounds cheesy, but it's actually super powerful for people to hear the story arc of someone else's life and what God did to save them and what he brought them from and what he brought them to and what they're currently learning right now. So what we do is every week after first service, in between services, one person shares their testimony for about five to seven minutes. And I went first so that I could set the tone for everybody else. As the leader, it's like, this is how I want it to be, okay? Five to seven minutes, don't ramble too long. You wanna set the tone. So I went first, I set the tone, I shared my testimony, and it really helps everyone feel more connected relationally to one another. And it also forces them to consider their own spiritual walk. Where are they at right now? It causes them to pause and ponder their own spiritual journey and their own spiritual life. So it's very good relationally and spiritually to share your testimony. And when you find out details about people's life, it creates connections because it's like, oh, I also grew up in that neighborhood, or oh, my parents are also divorced, or oh, whatever shared common experiences that you have with someone, it builds a connection point, a bridge between the two people or within the group. And so it's very, very powerful to share your testimony. And what we've done is after that person shares, they choose next week's victim. We like to call it the victim. So who's the next week's victim? Whoever shares that week gets to choose the following week's victim. So share your testimonies with each other. That is your first way to build more connections and relationships on your team. The second way is is to take a genuine interest. As the leader, you take a genuine interest in your people. Make them feel welcomed. Give them a warm greeting when you see them come into rehearsal. I see some worship leaders, they're busy fiddling with their pedals or they're whatever, getting stuff set up. No, first of all, do all that beforehand. Get the stage set up beforehand so that you can warmly greet each person when they arrive. Say hello, name, fist bump, walk up to them, side hug, high five, whatever you're comfortable doing. Acknowledge them, ask them how their week is going, ask them for any updates on whatever it was that you talked about with them last week. So if they're like, oh, I have a test this week, then the following week say, hey, how did your test go? Take a genuine interest in this person because if people feel that you care, they will care. When people feel like they matter, they will be more engaged and more willing to contribute. It's called psychological safety. They know this is a safe environment for me to be my whole self, to bring all of myself to this place. I don't have to put myself in a box or be scared. Psychological safety is like the number one quality of a high functioning team. So take a genuine interest in the individuals and what's going on in their lives. One question that I like to ask whenever we're in a group setting is, did anyone have anything crazy happen this week? It could be good crazy, it could be bad crazy. Did anyone have anything crazy happen this week? Or another way to phrase it is, hey, did anything unexpected or surprising happen this week for any of you? And these questions bring out the highs and the lows of our everyday life because it's like, oh, oh, actually, yeah, this thing happened. Oh my gosh, my car got totaled. And then now all of us are aware of what's going on in each other's lives and we're able to celebrate 
and support. Celebrate in the good things and support in the bad things. And so even if you ask that question and just one or two people share their crazy event or their surprising or unexpected thing, one or two people sharing that will help the whole team feel more connected. So that's your second thing is to take a genuine interest in people. The third thing you can do to make your team feel more connected is team devotions. I'm shocked how many worship leaders aren't doing some sort of devotion with their people. I am actually gonna give you a month's worth of free devotions right below this video or in the show notes if you're listening to audio only, but please use those. There's four free weeks worth of team devotions completely done for you. It's got a scripture, a summary, discussion questions, and even a closing prayer. Okay, so take those devos, print them out, and use them next week because I want you to make sure your team is having spiritual conversation around the Bible. So put your email in, grab those, and use them, please, please. And I actually have a year's worth of done-for-you devos in the Academy. If you wanna try the Academy, you can get the year's worth of devos. But I use these devos right before our rehearsal, and then we take prayer requests, and then if we have time, everybody prays for the person to their right, okay? And I started using these recently with the youth band, and little by little, they're starting to open up. At first, it's like, who's this new dude? And like, I don't trust him at all. But little by little, they're starting to open up and share more and be more open and be more receptive and be more engaged. And I just wanna encourage you, Building a connected team takes time. It's one smile at a time, one joke at a time, one loving tease at a time. It's one prayer request at a time. But week after week, if you do the right things consistently, you'll have a super tight-knit team that genuinely cares about one another. So use those team devos. If you don't wanna use those, one other alternative is to read a Psalm each week. You just open up to the book of Psalms, start at chapter one, and everybody in the circle reads a verse. You go around the circle until the whole Psalm is finished. Sometimes you have to go around the circle multiple times. And then at the end of that, you say, what jumped out to you? What verse popped out to you? What thought popped into your head while you were reading? And then you just discuss. So that's another alternative that you can use. All right. So the last way to build more connections on your team is to do an offsite activity because you really get to know somebody when you spend time with them in different environments. And so it could be as simple as taking them out to pizza and treating them. Please treat them to pizza. It's not that expensive. Or having them over to your house for a potluck and game night or taking them to mini golf. Or I heard of a team recently that did an escape room together. I do not think I would ever like being in an escape room. I'm not sure. Just seems weird. But anyway, so for me at my church, I'm going to take all the musicians out to dinner, a nice dinner at a nice restaurant and treat them. Well, the church is going to treat them. I'm too poor to treat them. But take them out to a nice dinner as a way of saying thank you for serving and leading for the last two years without having a proper worship pastor over them. And I actually have three completely done for you team building activities right below this video for free. You can have them all planned out for you. The games are planned out. It explains how to play the games. So I'm gonna put those three underneath or I have 15 done for you team building activities in the academy as well as our team building course which will teach you how to build healthy and high functioning teams. It covers recruiting, auditioning, onboarding, training, difficult conversations, and a whole bunch of other topics about how to build a healthy team. You can try that course and nine other courses, plus our live monthly trainings, our supportive community for just $1 for 15 days of full access. You can try it at worshipministrytraining.com. But I really wanna encourage you, we're not called to make music, we're called to make disciples. So investing in your team spiritually, relationally, connecting with them, That is the thing God cares about more. If we don't invest in people and we're just putting on a production, I believe that that ministry does not actually honor God. So brick by brick, piece by piece, smile by smile, make your ministry a more warm, welcoming, and friendly environment. And so be sure to grab those devos and those team building activities below this video and start using them. I promise you it will make a difference. And I did a podcast interview with a guy named Lee Baker about investing in your worship volunteers. So click that video over here or down below in the show notes. But thank you for letting me encourage you and I'll see you in the next video or inside the Academy. God bless.